Welcome to my life as an NPC. I am Carbon Scythe, and today we're going to continue to play Coffee Talk 2. Today is Thursday, September 28th, 2023. And uh, let's get into it, shall we? I am on the 10th episode. It is getting into. The last game was 14 uh, episodes, I believe. It was supposed to be. I made it 11 because I'm dumb. Um, but yeah. New image recognition tech confuses gnomes with dwarves. A review. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, robots asked to give ultimate advice. Whoops. Elven burnout is real. Here's how to avoid it. So, new image recognition tech. Um, okay, so this is not exactly the same. But it kind of reminds me of the whole uh, uh, computers can't see black people uh, dilemma, uh, which is a thing. Uh, Machines and, or rather, um, motion sensors can't see black, uh, darker skin, can't see black people essentially. Uh, Trevor Noah did an entire uh, episode about it, and it was real funny because uh, what's her name? I don't remember her name. It was so long ago, and she was only there for a few episodes. Well, not a few episodes. She was a secondary uh, cast member. Uh, but she was just uh, surviving the AI uprising because she's a black person who cannot be seen by machines. Uh, <laughs> it was kind of funny. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so let's see. Gnome and Dwarves, we don't have any of those characters in the game. But that could be an Aqua thing. Robots has to give ultimate advice, could also be Aqua, Elven Burnout, that is Baylis. But uh, this has not been uh, sh telling us uh, anything about the characters showing up lately. So we'll see what happens. Good evening. Ah, there we go. Officer, welcome. But before that we do that, let's check out uh, what's going on over at Tomato Chill. Uh, some new stories. A girl always has her secrets. What could that mean? I'm assuming this has to do with her uh, upcoming music that she is producing herself. So, good. I spent almost two hours checking on the mobile games in the App Store. The amount of copycat game games is just staggering. Yeah, that's fucking true, which is why I usually don't play any uh, mobile games because there are so v many of them that I don't know which ones is actually good. Kind of like analysis paralysis and I just cannot be bothered with it. No delivery today, we'll resume tomorrow. <laughs> well, good for you. She is using this more as a notebook than a social media. Which is interesting. Officer, welcome. Hey, Carbon. How are you doing? Not that good, huh? Officer? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. My mind is kind of elsewhere right now. Okay. No worries. Work issues? <laughs> what else? I'm all ears if you want to chat. <laughs> You're a pal. I'm in a real bind, Carbon. <laughs> well, how can how can I help you? What happened? Well, never any workplace issues aside, things are getting weirder by the minute, mm. and I'm feeling out of my debt. Are you talking about your recent patrols? Yeah. I as every time I'm just now that. When I was playing this game, the first game, I couldn't really imagine what the storyline, how it played out. Uh, but now, uh, not the storyline, but how my character, the barista, is playing out. But now that I'm not voicing it, I'm just imagining standing there with a big ass cup like this in a, um, a towel and just cleaning out glasses. That's because I am here now. 
uh, in the <laughs> coffee shop shop. Uh, it feels very different, to be honest. I've been analyzing the CCTV footage the last couple of days. Oh, I see. How did that go? Did the cameras manage to capture anything? Yes and no. The infrared caught a couple of blurry things. They ran off, turned the corner, and disappeared. <laughs> Could have been anything, like rats or cats. But neither fits with what I heard on the scene. The footsteps, you know? The laughter. <laughs> Come to think of it, it sounded more like giggles. Okay. Giggles. Can werebeasts giggle? Can werebeasts giggle? I don't know how to read that. Not at that size. No. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they could, it doesn't explain the footsteps, really. I see. So, what's next? I have some ideas, but they're just wild theories at this point. In short, I'm stumped. You know, Carvin, I've been racking my brain ever since Miss Riona dropped that bomb about the fairies, you see. Mm, yeah, that, that did mess up with all of us. Oh, what about them? As it turns out, fairies was an umbrella term for many yeah, types of things. Anything that didn't fit the known physical rules at the time was to be referred as such. Ah, well, yeah. Uh, and now we use essentially the word fae instead when it comes to fantasy. And one of the original fae is goblin, as I understand it. I'm not uh, too uh, involved in that kind of lore. But uh, uh, goblins used to be considered fae. But now, if you were to look in any modern uh, fantasy tropes, goblin is a, its own race, essentially. So yeah, anything that didn't fit the known physical rules at the same time at the time was to be referred as such a fae, a fairy. So yeah, there, there's nothing saying that fairy and fae. No, uh, fairies and all the fairies are the same thing by fairies fairy standpoint. Oh. Hmm. Does that mean Banshees were part of the fairy folk? <laughs> Probably. And now I see what's going on here. Uh, this. I uh, just started playing this game. No, let me. Uh, and I just started playing League of Faith. And I also found a another YouTuber <laughs> who was playing that. So I'm looking at that later today after I've caught up to that point in time where he is. But now, now we're here. Interesting that my cell phone activated YouTube in that way. Anyway. Not anymore though. It's an ongoing process, but the list is getting shorter. But back then, any sentient being that was even remotely incomprehensible <laughs> was considered Remotely that. incomprehensible. And that includes apparitions. Apparitions? Apparitions? Yes. Yes. Apparitions like... Ghosts. Ghosts. <laughs> Ghosts? Ghost. Ghost. I see. What do you mean, I see? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. You are scared of ghosts. Oh, Lord, even his uh, clothes are on edge here. <laughs> yeah? Doesn't this sound like a bad joke to you? Yeah. Uh. I'm not sure I follow. 
as you can see ghosts. Bud, come on. Ghosts don't exist. How can you say that? How, how can anything be non-existent in this kind of world, right? Well, if that's the case, if ghosts don't exist, then I would assume that any kind of afterlife thing has not been proven in that world either. Because if they had heaven or hell, they would have ghosts because the prerequisite for a ghost is that they can go to heaven or hell and they have failed to do so. They are stuck in the in between. Um, so that means no devils, no angels, by um, extrapolation, but succubus is a kind of devil. It's kind of a is a kind of demon. So it's really hard to pinpoint what it does and does not exist in this world. Do they? Because if they do. All I can think about is that damn tree now. <laughs> ah, right. The tree. Does that mean it's haunted? It, it could be. Back. Don't get how you could be so calm about this. Uh, uh, well, why wouldn't I be? I mean, there have been all sorts of customers here. Some of them are so out of this world even. Sometimes literally. You're right. That was not the right way to put that. Uh, I have misread that sentence. I guess you're not the only one who's being weird here. Don't say that. Everyone has their own uh, peccadillos. True that. If you don't, don't mind telling me though, may I ask the reason you're so afraid of ghosts? Gosh, no. <laughs> That's a long story. Not something I'm ready to talk about okay. anyway. I respect that. That's understandable. I'm just real bad at dealing with spooks. They make me question everything I've ever known, you know? But I always thought you're pretty good at handling ambiguity, officer. Not when it comes to supernatural stuff. What? Does that mean that magic doesn't exist in this world? We have, well, but it does. Because we have literally uh, people with cat ears who can turn into cats. That's gotta be magic, no? And we got uh, people who live forever because they're vampires and elves. Magic exists. Because we don't know enough about what's real and what's not. What will they do? Will they hurt us? Do they bring bad luck? Good luck? What's the truth? Who knows? Maybe you should take a day off and catch up on your sleep. Huh? What's that? No, nothing. You know, another patron of mine suggested a documentary to watch. Yeah? The focus was on interesting drinks from around the world. You can find everything from the mundane to the extreme. From local comforts to really special stuff. And I kept thinking about one particular drink might interest you. It is something like a protection drink. It's made of coffee, honey, lemon, and a slew of other ingredients. Huh. Protection from what, though? From evil spirits and bad luck, I think. Maybe it'll help you help ease your mind a bit. Ah, gotcha. Coffee, honey, lemon. But Carbon, even if the whole situation is uh, haunted, there shouldn't be any evil spirits, right? 
Well, the thing with fairies and fae in general, Officer Georgie, is that whatever we consider good or bad and good and evil does not necessarily apply to the true fairies. I wouldn't know. Okay, then make me this magical drink you've learned, Carbon. Let's double check that I said it correctly. Maybe it's in... Nope, it's not in there. Uh, but it's... Um... Coffee, honey, lemon. Yep. But before that, uh, coffee, honey, lemon. Here we go. And then we go over here. Do you know why the sailors from France are more musical than the ones from America? Because they have French shorts! <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Hey, hey. That's, that's a semi good joke. <laughs> Oh, Kimada, Kimada, looks amazing. Do we have anything to give? Nothing to give, because you have your lighter this time around. And are we gonna ask you to use your lighter to put this on fire? That would be cool. That's that's not good. You go. Oh, careful! But let's uh, unlock the Kimara first. The spell laden alcohol imbued Galician drink is known to ward off evil spirits. Just look at it. Dang, Carbon. This is really something else. You sure it's okay to drink? <laughs> I have no idea. But I'll take responsibility if anything happens. <laughs> I'm just being silly, aren't I? Sorry for bothering you with all this stuff, Carmen. You even made this crazy drink to make me feel better. Dude, it's fine. Don't say that. I'm always happy to help uh, however I can. Thanks. Man. At least with crooks, you can actually deal directly with them, you know? Not the case with apparitions. Who is that? That's Luca, so it says someone completely new. Who is that? Not with that attitude. Huh? Oh, right! This is, um... I heard about this. Hey, um, this dude is from a different game that is not a part of a Togi Productions. The, this was some kind of, um, what's it called? When, uh, when characters visit each other's series kind of thing. Everything can be caught with a little elbow grease. Not actual elbow grease. I won't make that mistake again. McQueen? You know him? Is that you? Georgie Williams. Okay. Hello, Williams. It's been a while. Huh. It is you. The surprises just keep coming this week. Let me get... Let, let me go over there. Let me go over there. You know each other? More or less. We were brunch buddies. Brunch buddies. Brunch buddies. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm meant to say brunch buddies in the same... S I feel like I'm meant to say brunch buddies in the same series too. But I don't like to talk about it. I still get nightmares. I feel ya. I wasn't sure we were gonna make it out alive. Okay. We were truly the lucky ones. Without a doubt. I'll just take the bo take both of your words for it. Good. Because I don't like to talk about it. So what brings you here, Detective? Surely it's not the coffee. 
Excuse me, Georgie. Secret police reasons. I've not read the briefing yet. But enough about me. Tell me about your supernatural problems. Yeah? You need to bust a ghost? You know who to call. Ghostbusters! Oh. Well, busting might be a bit much. I was just talking to Carbon about getting over my fear of that stuff. And ghosts? Something like that. I'm weak against ghostly looking <laughs> stuff. Okay. I get freaked out. That's easily. why you're so afraid of uh, Riona. For example, I admit I got a little spooked by what happened on Bourne Street the other day. Ah, I remember that. <laughs> I know very well that unchecked fear leads to prejudice. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a no-no in my book. It even pains me to admit that out loud. Sometimes the toughest case to crack is ourselves. Other times, it's ghosts. How do you do it, detective? Your cases, man. I'd have probably lost all my hair by now if I were you. <laughs> okay, so he's some kind of supernatural investigator, it seems. And you're looking for the ghost haunting this cafe. I try not to think yeah, about it all too much. And when I do think about it, I think, who else will do it? Nobody. That's who. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, once you get over that dead part, they're just like you and me. Look, I remember this one case we were investigating a haunted apartment. This lady, her husband had recently passed away but wasn't moving on, if you get my drift. Real deadbeat, couldn't take a hint. <laughs> Anyway, we had to go in and exercise the place, right? But the husband, he's got wind and he's retreated into the basement. I won't go get into the technicalities of it, but it's harder to get a ghost out of a basement or an attic. Oh. It's all about angles, really. Well, that's interesting. I can really use that for my, um, uh, my TTRPG games. Because right now, my... Uh, well, this is going to be uh, released way after that, but right now uh, my players are supposed to be exercising a ghost from Tida Slot in Westeros. I mean, I get it. The, that used to be a so, all this stuff is still there. So, I get that. So, I'm slowly going down the stairs to try and coax him out. BAM! Next minute. All this romantic music is playing and the whole place is lit by a spotlight. Basic sensory illusions, classic ghost tricks. Then, before I know what hit me, I'm sitting at this potter wheel and he's behind me and... Wait. Isn't this the plot of the 99 film Ghost? I haven't seen that movie, but even I recognize that. Oh. Maybe. We had a movie night at work and I dozed off before it started. The story must have slipped into my subconscious. Riveting. Ha. Huh. So, more... Whoa! Who is this huge dude? But yeah, he's from the same game. And now that I think about it. Hey, detective. Hey, people I don't know. Did you get uh, your import? Oh. Did you get your import in there and sorted? I sure did. Dooley, Dooley, Dooley. I can see crumbs stuck to your face. That's just the rain. It's very uh, bready rain. There's filling all over your top. Top? It's called as uniform, right? That's. Blood from a gunshot wound. It's healed up, though. You're literally holding the receipt from the donut shop. That's why they pay you the big bucks, detective. That's why they pay you the big bucks, detective. So, what did I miss? 
We're talking about getting rid of Officer Williams' fear of ghosts. Hey. This is gonna be a long episode. <laughs> Dude, he, Georgie is so small in comparison. He's teeny tiny. Ghosts? Yeah, you're afraid of them, right, Dooley? No idea, I never met one. We, s we stopped the ghost riots. <laughs> Ghosts are real. So you don't need to be scared of them. Easy. There you go, I guess. Sorry, that wasn't much help. Nah. What you said, that they're just like us, that's a good thing to be reminded of. Exactly. They used to be alive, just like us. As long as they don't try to eat, possess, violently murder you, you should be fine. Very reassuring. Just talk to them. Feel the culture. Feel their culture. Listen to the issues and special ways. Treat them like any other person. See what's on the inside. We should be easy since you can see through them. I thought you didn't believe in ghosts. It's best to not overthink anything he says. I certainly don't. Oh lord, okay, so... We got the big, strong, serious type, who's kind of a cheeky, and then we got a big, chunkalunka idiot. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for the advice. I think it'll help. Our pleasure. Now, Dooley, I think we should read that case uh, brief. I think we should read that case briefing and find out why we're here. I already did. Oh? Turns out we're meant to arrest a person driving that taxi. Huh. Instead of. Instead of taking it all the way to Seattle, yes. Why? The driver was a super cabra. <laughs> okay, okay, let's get out of here, Dooley. Good luck, officer. Thanks, McQueen. A lot. You too, Officer Dooley. Bye, guy. Good luck with your rat problem or whatever. Bye, Coffee Wizard. What? Take care. He was a big idiot. That was quite something. Well, what do you know, Carbon? Looks like my good luck is back. Is it? I'm feeling like a million oh, bucks okay. now. I'm very glad you do. <laughs> Thanks anyway, Carbon. I really did nothing much. Are you going to be okay? Okay enough to start thinking about what to do next. I'm done here for the night. You have a good evening, alright? Please keep me updated, officer. And stay safe. Will do. Alright then. Maybe I'll go check the stock and... Hmm? Ah, okay, it's Riona. I, th I was just waiting for us uh, for the game to show us the ladder again. Miss Riona, welcome! Hello. And it's already been uh, 30 minutes. This is going to be a long episode. How's the traffic out there? It's a mess. <laughs> There's construction work taking place on Leonora Avenue. Oof. I can imagine the gridlock already. Fortunately, I have no deliveries to make today. That's great. I'm happy you're here. So, anything can me I anything I can make you this evening? I'd like something for my throat. I would appreciate a cup of tea infused with some lemon and a touch of honey. Tea, lemon, honey. Gotcha. 
So kind of like the reverse, but with tea instead. Mm. Is this the coffee syrup? Nah. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Midsummer Night Stream. Serve it. A cup of warmer Midsummer Night Cream for you, miss. And I'm just gonna check that off. Oh, we got an update too. Okay. Sweet and memorable, like summertime blues. Ah, we got uh, more with the Riona. Singer, Griever. Part time, Griever. Uh, is that like Uber? I guess. A cup of warm mid midsummer night cream for you, miss. That's what we call it here. How whimsical. <laughs> she is so adorable. It's so beautiful. You know? It's wonderful. Thank you. Sweet but well balanced with the lemon and the slight bitterness of the tea completes the taste. Thank you. You're so very welcome. By the way, he has missed Officer Georgia by a few seconds. Is that so? How is he? He's been thinking about what you said quite a bit, actually. Oh? He's currently dealing with plenty of clues he isn't used to. That's why he's hard at work at the moment. I see. Would you mind doing me a favor? Oh? What do you need? Could you give my contact information to him? No, no, of course, of course. We only connected by a Bluetooth last time, so... <laughs> oh. An email address and a phone number are written on it, belonging to Riona Sherin. Sherin. A piece of blue card with an email. Yeah, that was... I read. And it even said Riona in the top there. What I said a few days ago may have been a bit overwhelming. Mm, yeah, definitely. It is possible that I spoke more than was necessary. All because I couldn't help but feel a pang of bitterness knowing what happened to the tree. Mm. That's entirely understandable though. But it is not my intention to interfere with his work. As such, if he requires any assistance, please, oh, do course. let me know. Riona, the ghostly detective! Is the least I could do as I realized there would be plenty of difficulty obtaining information. Oh, I, I mean because Officer Georgie is a human. <laughs> Just look at her face! She is oh my god, I am so in love. And we said my physical beings have our own way of sharing information as such. Oh. I understand what you mean. Okay. I just do not wish to incriminate anything or anyone. It's fine. I get it. I'm glad. Who else is coming up? Huh. Why did we look over there? I'd say you already helped him out in more ways than one. Hmm? Sorry, did you say something? I was zoning out a little. No, nothing. I'll pass this on to him. Okay, thank you. What, what, why were we looking over here? Oh shit, crap! Uh, you're welcome. Bad traffic aside, how are you? Uh, I'm... To be honest, I've had a lot on my mind of late. And I don't know how to express it without sounding pathetic. You know I'm all ears. That might actually be part of the problem, I'm afraid. <laughs> Pardon? You know, I've held conversations with more individuals over the past week than I have in the past few years. Is that a good or a bad thing? It's troubling. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I don't mean it necessarily in a negative way. It's just... I used to believe that I had a settled life objective. 
But I've been doubting it lately. Mm. How come? I finally heard back from Miss Rachel yesterday. Ah, right, right, right. Ooh, any good news? No. Hmm. Our fields are admittedly quite different, so I was not expecting much. Mm. However, she provided me some contacts who may be of assistance. I mean, just call the Finnish band Nightwish. They have an opera singer as their lead singer. That would be... Uh, Nightwish is amazing. I wish I had your angel it's not exactly what you want, but you still get to use your skill in a very impressive way. Even though they had no direct connection to the audience I am trying to reach. I see. She explained clearly why she thinks I should contact them, however. <laughs> Which I am thankful for. That's very thoughtful of her. So, what's the battle plan? And why are you doubting yourself? In essence, the advice is to slowly increase my network, to make myself known. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh? Sounds familiar, doesn't mm -hmm. it? You can probably guess my concern yeah. about it. I think so. But you could give me a refresher. Yeah, so I don't misunderstand. I feel like that would be a shortcut, so to speak. But... I... I mean, yeah, social media is a completely new avenue of doing things, but how do you think this works anyway? You just become a superstar overnight you simply are great S having people enjoying your music your song is what you're out for uh, what you're after and you use social media in this century so yeah that's how you do it it's simply way faster than using um, person to person right she did, however, every man we have an important and humbling fact. Oh. What would that be? Well... Oh, but it's not a guarantee you get anything out of it, don't you think? <laughs> Unless you're really, really sure the so-called shortcut is 100% gonna work. Because you have to do way, way more than just making a few calls and waiting for callbacks, you know? Mm, that is true. As well as uh, putting yourself out there uh, to agents and things, you actually have to already be working on it. Which is kind of like the things we do uh, in this YouTuber and v uh, community, I guess. I mean, I'm not uh, putting myself out there to... Uh, game developers or anything like that, or agents of any kind. Um, but I do try to have a bit of a social media connection, even though it's not my thing at all. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of work, especially now that I'm also working at uh, Gröna Lund. Um, so, yeah. It's not... I'm not just recording it and putting it up. I am watching every single episode that I am recording. Um, to make sure that uh, I cut it properly and things like that. I do take a bit of pride in that because the episodes could easily be 10 minutes longer if I didn't cut out each bad part of it, to be honest. It's, it's, not, it's not a heavy workload, but it is more work than you would assume. I'd say that's a decent impression of her. <laughs> Thank you. After that, she told me a story about her early career experiences, both the good and the bad. Getting noticed is truly only the beginning. Mm -hmm. Then it is either a matter of letting your talent speak for you, or you go out there to develop connections with the right people. And I just realized the reason why she wasn't here when uh, the other agents, uh, agent and officer were here but is because they would tr probably try to bust her. For being a ghost. Just say. Even then, there's still no guarantee of success. After listening to her explanation, I respect Miss Rachel's determination. I can certainly see how it worked out for her. 
But then I was left wondering whether Mr. Lucas meant something similar during our first meeting. I believe so. But he's a uh, bit more forward with the way he talks. Right. I thought it all sounded familiar. Will you try her suggestion then? I don't know. Is it difficult? No more difficult than sending reels to every audition I've come across. And being rejected by every single one. But for some reason I feel... I feel conflicted about him. Speaking of Mr. Lucas, he and I have also continued our correspondence. Hmm. Although, perhaps it was more like a necessity? Uh, did something happen? He was... stuck. Pardon? Actually, he posted about it on social media last night. Oh, damn, that was a few days ago. I don't remember what he said. Oh. Mm, I might have seen it. Did you? I came across it when I was updating my schedule and responded out of concern. Right. Then he called me almost immediately. He was loud. Okay. All sounds in order. And extremely drunk. Really? He denied it at first. <laughs> but it was too obvious not to notice. He told me he was walking aimlessly, deep in thought, and entered Kerry Park without realizing he had done so. Must have been some deep thinking he was doing, because I think it rained pretty hard last night. Well, I wouldn't <laughs> know. The bus to and from there is currently not operating after 10 p.m. Oh. Which is why I sent him a message informing him of that fact, as he seemed to be unaware of it. Right. So he called me to ask if there was any other mode of public transit nearby. Wouldn't it have been easier for him to just call a cab? He told me he wanted to know the city better. At midnight? Why not? After all, you operate your business after dark yourself. Busted. <laughs> Touché! Perhaps he just didn't want to go home yet. And I might be mistaken here, but I thought he doesn't like drinking. Wasn't right. it party? Nevertheless, I think last night was quite different. Hmm? It appears he had dinner with his team. And he needed the extra courage in order to negotiate with them about his proposal. No, that was action. being a dick. Derek said that uh, we're having a short... Um, talk about how uh, alcohol uh, is a liquid courage or why that is what you why you say when you're what you say when you're drunk is actually the truth because it is called liquid courage after all oh i see i suppose it didn't go as expected perhaps and I know that feeling all too well. Miss... However, he said he will keep negotiating until they reach a compromise. Mm. That's good. Is it though? Why wouldn't it be good? Miss Rachel told me about the hoops she had to jump through at the beginning of her career with her teammates as well. Likewise, Mr. Lucas has to work hard to obtain approval from his team for his actions. I just... How can they still be so positive? What do you mean? I just cannot picture myself convincing others to give me a chance like that. I almost wanted to ask. Why do we have to be at the mercy of others in order to succeed or fail? That is... Very true. But it's also the way of life in this world, even if it's not uh, singing careers or social media appearances and things like that. It's just in general. We have to work and someone has to uh, approve 
of our work uh, in order for us to be, get a paycheck and then we can buy food, we can buy clothes, we can uh, pay rent. Uh, so yeah, we always have to prove ourselves to someone else or we will literally die. Which is why I am a big uh, fan of basic uh, universe, universal basic income. And uh, because you shouldn't have to prove yourself as a state should be your mommy and daddy and you should uh, receive a uh, allowance every month and if you want to work that's awesome that allows you to do more than simply living your life you know that's how it should be can tell and speak for itself But if I truly believe that, the number of rejections I have received so far... Oh yeah, if that was true, then that would mean you don't have talent. I should have stopped a long time ago, shouldn't I? Right. That's why it doesn't work that way. What do you mean? So that talent speak for itself, we would all have to have the same standards. That's also true. I see what you mean. Art would cease to be art if it were standardized, wouldn't it? However... Doesn't that imply that everything still depends on the whims of the individual judging you at the moment? <laughs> it very much does. I mean... Uh, Van Gogh... Van Gogh... Gogh however you pronounce it... Uh, was not... Uh, big and famous when he was alive. He did not... Uh, become a big important figure in art until after he died. And I think it's the same thing with the uh, saints as well. Uh, maybe it's different now, but I be believe I heard somewhere that you cannot receive saint status until after your passing. There is a uh, back that there never used to be any live saints because you can't receive that status until you're dead. It's like a memorial, a memory uh, kind of thing. So yeah, it's always always been that, been like that. How does someone like Miss Rachel or Mr. Lucas manage to be fine with that? Hmm. Perhaps because they don't see it as the be all and end all. What do you mean? Yeah, I don't know what that means either. Rather than viewing them as judges with the authority to determine their fates. Perhaps they simply see them as hills to either overcome or avoid, if that makes sense. Just a matter of perspective as to where the power lies. But it's not easy to climb those hills, especially if you've never done it before. Which is why you need help from Lucas and uh, Rachel. Therefore, it's good to try and find out what works for you, or ask for guidance or assistance even. Because one can possibly know every single way to overcome obstacles. Mm -hmm. Or be able to safely recognize warning signs without first learning about them from others. True, true. Is that what you're trying to say? Pretty much. I see. Still... Miss Riona? Uh, uh, yes. Sorry, I got a bit lost in my thoughts. You're fine, I promise. But speaking of Mr. Lucas, what happened to him after the call? I picked him up and drove him <laughs> home. <laughs> Whoa. But I thought you were you're located in Bellevue. I am. Hmm. But I still have unfinished business in the downtown area. Uh, moreover, he suddenly began singing quite loudly during the end of our call. <laughs> <laughs> Which led me to conclude that it would be best for me to go and fetch him. I see. How was his singing, in your opinion? Ah, uh, um... It wasn't too bad. <laughs> If not for the fact that he was screaming most of the lyrics, that is. It well. 
His hoodie was soaked when I arrived, so he had to take it off before getting into my car. Does that mean he was sitting naked in your car? Thankfully, the water did not completely soak through to his shirt, ah, okay. so he remained relatively dry. However, I still had to lay down the seat covers as his fur got rather wet. Ah. Hope it didn't get sick then. Aside from all that, was he okay? Considering the situation you mentioned earlier, I mean... Mm. Well, he happily asked me to do karaoke with him, which I declined. <laughs> Probably for the best. Could have been entertaining though. I ended up taking him for a drive though, as I needed to take care of my unfinished business. A late night delivery? No, I was buying a pie. At midnight? Yes. Why are you keep on asking this? Why are you... Uh, do, do we want to have Monopoly on uh, open, being open at late at night or something? Why? Concern you may have. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> no, not at all. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> oh, Carbon, you will be fine. Oh, thank you. Uh, so. <laughs> I sort of want to know you so I can inform Officer Georgie about it. Oh? Why? His daughter loves pies. When his car was vandalized, Officer Georgie had plans to buy pies for his family's uh, get-together. But the report took a while and the weather was too bad. And by the time I was able to get a taxi, he thought everything was already closed. I see. But he takes pride in being a, a being a satellite. A satellite? They should just change it to being a satellite. So I wonder if he knows about it already. Well, it is a very small kiosk attached to a pub. Very easy to miss. The spot is known as Disco Pie and it serves fresh pies until 1 a.m. Yeah. Interesting. Good to know. Thanks. Getting back to the story though. You both went for pies, then... Yes, and that seemed to fascinate him for some reason. What did you each get? That was really way weird way of putting it. He ordered a slice of warm apple crumble with a scoop of French vanilla ice cream on top. Classic. And a large cup of piping hot coffee with a little bit of milk. That scoundrel! He should only be getting coffee here! Ouch! I feel betrayed! Truly! Oh. But it was my suggestion since I thought he needed to warm up. <laughs> Double ouch! I apologize? Dude, I'm joking. Hello. A little piece of advice though. A glass of warm water might be better for the inebriated. Yeah, right, because that's the thing. If you're drunk, have a lot of alcohol in the blood, and you also have... which saturates your blood and then you add coffee on top of that which makes your blood pump faster uh, which means you have less blood in the system faster I, I don't know but it's uh, al alcohol and caffeine is not a good mix that's all I know Cough is not the best at retaining fluids and thus preventing hangovers. Huh? Oh, that's really good information to know. This is why you're the best beverage <laughs> to come. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, my feelings are hurt slightly less now. And what did you get for yourself? I had a slice of hibiscus blueberry mint pie myself. Ooh! I think uh, me and this uh, pie, uh, disco... Disco pie needs to work together. And just so you know, I did not order anything <laughs> to drink. Good. 
Oh, we are, we are <laughs> flirting hard here. Drinks aside. What an interesting combination for a pie. How did you like it? I enjoyed it. You serve hibiscus here too, don't you? Yes, I do. I remember to order it next time. Please do. And so, we continued our conversation afterwards. That was when he told me he had not given up on his goal, despite the many disappointments with his team. He also told me why he does not drive at all. Really? Why? Uh, it is... Personal? On second thought, it may be better to hear the story directly from him another time. I apologize. That's fine. No problem. I understand. We also discussed quite a few things we have in common. Really? Yes, surprisingly. And before we knew it, it was already nearing 5am. Wow. Must have been a gripping conversation. I'm not sure. Did he sober up? However, his exhaustion seemed to finally catch up with him then, so I drove him home. Weren't you tired as well? No. You don't sleep, do you? I should go now. Alright. Will you be okay? I'm... I have a lot to think about. Thank you for being patient with my concerns, Carmen. Dude, of course. No problem at all. In the time. Have a good evening then, Carbon. Come back again soon. Well, that was an abrupt ending to it. Uh, no goodbye, good night, and things like that. But yeah, that's it for today's episode. Uh, I am just, I'm just growing for Rihanna here. Uh, but yeah, cappuccino, an Italian delight. Coffee, milk, milk. No, that's a latte. Coffee, coffee, milk, perhaps. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that episode, and I will see you in the next one. And remember, just because you're not the main character doesn't mean you're not important. Goodbye, everyone.